morning and welcome to Wright Church. It is a wonderful thing to see all of you here today. And I pray my mic is on. One, two. Hello, one, two. So I'm playing with a new thing. I want to say wherever you are in your journey. And I can't hear you. One, two, one, two, one, two. So I'm playing with the new model. We'll see how this works. Uh, so wherever you are on your journey, right, and whoever you are on your journey, we want to say we are here for you. We'll see how that works, all right? We are here for you. I, our announcements today are these. Next week, we welcome in new members. Yay! If you weren't part of the Explorers class and you want to be a new member, you still can. Just see me. Um, also, we have a Bible study starting not this Tuesday evening, but the following Tuesday on Valentine's Day. And some of you might have some really hot dates that day. If you want to be part of it and you have a hot date, see me and we'll figure out a way for you to catch up. And I think that is all for today. Let us center ourselves and prepare ourselves to worship our loving God. The call to worship is responsive this morning. Rejoice, people of God. Let the compassionate one shine on you. Shine, O Christ, into the depths of our soul. Come and be transformed by the living Christ. We will shine as a light on a hill with compassion, justice, and mercy. Let your praise loosen the bonds of self-doubt within. In the invocation, let us, let us pray together. God of radiant love, bring light to our journey that we may see your path and correct our ways. Shine in us and through us that we may be lights of compassion and justice, signposts to the glory of your kingdom for all the world to see. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we join in singing our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
this time, feel free to say good morning to your neighbor, shake a hand, give them a hug if you're brave. <laughs> for them to settle. Once again this morning, we have proved that we are a conversational church as well as a congregational church. J just as a hint to, to our worship service, when the music stops, uh, that's a signal that you need to sit down and be quiet. <laughs> I believe that was Pastor Larry. I believe we're now ready for the scriptural slideshow. The fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice. To let the oppressed go free. your bread with the hungry. And to bring the homeless poor into your house. will guide you continually and you shall be like a watered garden it is well with those who deal generously and lend who conduct their affairs with justice things has God revealed to us through the Spirit. So that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. 
A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a the lap stand. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. God, and as we sing out thy word, the lamp unto my feet. This is where we would have the time for the child, but we are uh, son's children, and son's our children's minister who is at home with her husband today, uh, who is not feeling well. So Terry, um, you can lift up Janae and Terry Hayden, because they are with one another, hopefully will be better very, very soon. So then we enter right into our scripture and our time together. Oh, I don't need to reread the scripture, but I'll tell you, my online workout instructor will often say to us when things are going to be tough, she'll say, I'm sorry, let's get to it. <laughs> so, yes, I'm sorry, and let's start with the difficult part of scripture, 
because my friends, most of you are mature Christians and those who are new, well, you might as well start with the deep stuff um, because it will bring light to your life. So this part calls you and it calls me to be more because Jesus was more. Jesus was more than what? Jesus was more than a follower of rules. And Jesus was more than a scribe or a Pharisee who lived his life in and for the temple. And Jesus was more than a prophet who spoke warning to the people of God. Jesus announced his intention with those words, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Fulfill. The Greek word is plerao. And plerao means to bring to pass, to ratify, to accomplish the sayings and promises and prophecies. And Matthew is fond of that word plerao. He uses it, get this, 17 times in his gospel. A whole lot more than you'll find it used in either Mark or Luke or John. And Matthew often uses this phrase, all was done so that the scriptures and the prophets might be plerao, fulfilled. So I'm led to ask, what is Matthew getting at? Why is he repeating this again and again? And what does it lead us to do today? Many scholars believe that the book of Matthew was written not by the, the Matthew the disciple, but by the one who lived in view of Jerusalem temple's destruction. The reason they think this is in Matthew 24, it says Jesus came out of the temple and was going away. His disciples came to him to point out the buildings of the temple. And Jesus asked them, you see all these, do you not? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. In 70 AD, the temple is destroyed. It's destroyed when the Roman army sets down a revolt against the empire. So a little history lesson from Wikipedia. In April 70, three days before the Passover, the Roman army started besieging Jerusalem. And the city had been taken over by several rebel factions following a period of massive unrest and the collapse of a short-lived provisional government. Within three weeks, the army broke, the Roman army broke the first two walls of the city, but a stubborn rebel standoff prevented them from penetrating the thickest and third wall. But on August 30th, Roman forces finally overwhelmed the defenders and set fire to the temple. So we don't have to argue the point, but Matthew is writing either in view of the destroyed temple, or he is prophesizing, Jesus is prophesizing that destroyed temple. Either way, if faith is to live on, if faith in God's promises is to live on, faith has to move beyond the physical temple. So Matthew makes this move in his gospel. Jesus becomes the fulfillment of the temple. Jesus becomes the temple. Matthew 26, 61, a witness is testifying against Jesus in the court of Caiaphas. He's been arrested, and this gentleman is going to uh, say what Jesus said as a way to get him uh, killed. And the witness says this, he said, that man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Matthew 27, it happens again. Jesus is on the cross being taunted. You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. The temple that is rebuilt isn't the brick and mortar temple that was not rebuilt in three days. It is Jesus, his body, resurrected. For Matthew, what is at stake is that the faith has to reach beyond the limitations of the temple and the physical presence of that. And I'm sorry, I got to reread that again. What's at stake is that faith 
has to be able to reach beyond the temporal limitations, both as a physical presence and a spiritual tether. It must reach beyond the temporal limitations, both as a physical presence and a spiritual tether. So Jesus accomplishes all that the temple was set up to do. In Jesus, we see God. In Jesus, we see God's righteousness. In Jesus, we see the living Torah guiding our lives. Jesus stands as the new temple. And if this is true, then the disciples take the place of the scribes and the Pharisees. The disciples are the new interpreters of and called to embody the faith. Disciples, you and me, we are called to interpret and embody the faith. We are to be more than followers of rules, more than scribes or Pharisees who lived their lives in and for the temple, more than prophets who spoke warnings to the people of God. We are to embody righteousness and peace and the promises of God. We are to be a light set upon a lampstand. We are to be the salt of the earth, a city on the hill, which can seem like a whole lot, especially for those of us, and I know there's some here, who are fond of sitting in their homes. So how do we become powered up disciples? I have three ideas. First, understand that your faith, your Christian faith, while it's not the only faith here on the planet, it is still essential to life on the planet. In Bible study, I was reminded that salt is necessary for our bodies to live. Your faith is the salt that gives life to others around you. Believe it. Live it. You know, we're a little shy about that in the United Church of Christ and in the Methodist traditions. And, oh, yes, and for you Lutherans out there, you Lutheran traditions, we don't want to push our faith on another. You know, I ran into a couple last, oh, a couple nights ago. I was out listening to a lecture, and I was there with my pastor T-shirt all ready to represent. And then... As we were talking, the couple boldly said to me, well, we aren't religious. And I was a bit tongue-tied. So instead of asking why, I just changed the subject. Yeah, you've done it too, huh? Uh Uh-huh. You know, I'm learning too, and there will be opportunities for me to shine the light of my faith. But it helps me to know that it's not only okay to do so, it's essential that in conversations outside of church, oh, you okay, dear man? Don't you hate that? It's a good thing you're not preaching today. I'd give you a cough drop, but I have mine in my mouth. Anybody have one? There you go. All right, so it helps me to know that Not only is my faith okay, but it is essential that I, conversations outside of church, I speak Jesus. Thank you, Linda. See, that's it. That's one of those kind acts of Jesus, right? How many have you ever been uh, handed a tissue when you were crying in a pew? Yeah. We take care of one another. I always like to say we practice our faith here in church so that we can continue to be the church outside of this building. So when I speak Jesus, I remember that without Jesus, I wouldn't be here. And without Jesus, I'd still be stuck in a place where there was no future. And without Jesus, I would not have experienced those transformational moments when I could do what was hard because it was of God. To shine the light of faith outside is to simply reflect my gratitude inside. Second way, then, to power up is to know the value of both love and of rest. They come together. 
Remember, Jesus healed a person on the Sabbath because of his love. But he did not ignore the command to rest. For Jesus went out apart from the crowds many a day to pray with his God. And in Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you what? I will give you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Are you in the process of caring for someone right now? Is it a child or a beloved or a friend or a neighbor or a parent or a sister or a brother? Are you tired of carrying the load all by yourself? You don't have to do it by yourself. If you're doing the work of love, you are doing the work of Christ. And he is willing to share the burden Barbara Brown Taylor writes how a shared yoke gives people energy they need to go on. For a well-matched pair can work all day because under a shared yoke, one can rest a little while the other pulls. And they have company all day long. Share the burden. Talk to God. Talk to Jesus. Invite in spirit. Whoever is more real to you at this moment. Share the burden as you share your love. Rest and let Jesus pull from time to time. Last, third, power up by being part of a community that seeks to embody the faith. That's why we're here. We're called to be a city on the hill, not an individual sending up smoke signals, right? And with the Super Bowl almost here, I imagine those stadiums filled with people cheering for their team. It's a wonderful experience when you experience a win together. I remember leaving an Angels baseball game, and they were doing very well that year, and we all were walking down the, the what are those called, outside of you going around and around and down and down. So we're out there going down uh, into the parking lot, and we're all chanting, we're number one. Well, it was great. It was a great moment. Loved it, loved it. Well, we get to celebrate God's winning presence in our lives every Sunday. Our cheers are our songs, and our hopes are our prayers, and our food is communion. And while our beautiful and beautifully kept up building gives us shelter and convenience, we know the church is not the building. The church is you. You are the church. You are the church. You are the embodiment of Christ here on the earth. And so power up, because it doesn't help if we're like a limp presence, right? We want people looking at us and thinking, well, that's a powerful faith. We want them to see Jesus working in us. So you are more, friends, than a follower of rules, and you are more than a building, and you are more than a prophet. You are incarnate love, because you, like Jesus, are God's beloved. So power up, my friends, you who are light and salt of the earth. Serve with Jesus by your side and celebrate with us the winning ways of God in you and in all the land. Thanks be to God and amen. And then we turn the page. Because we get to share our light and our love through our giving. And this is through our dollar giving. We give in other ways all throughout the week. So thank you for all who give today, and may we continue to bless others as we bless this community of faith that we might be, bring more light and more love into the world.
his story. Let my eyes see your kingdom shine all around. Let my heart overflow with passion for your name. Let my life be a song revealing who you are. For you are salt and light. At this time, please feel free to stand and join with us for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly. Testing one, two, I'm back on. So we come to the table of blessing of this communion where the poor are made rich and the hungry are fed and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they drink their fill. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and of earth, and bringer of justice and righteousness. In ancient days, you created us in your image to be reflections of your justice and peace in the world. And when we fell short and wandered away from your path of righteousness and love, you held our hand and walked with us in mercy and compassion. In the fullness of time, you sent your son Jesus to reveal your gracious presence in the world and to show us the way of peace. 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so it is with bread, or with joy and gratitude that we break this bread. Remember the many times that Jesus blessed his disciples in the sharing of his body, the bread. And with joy and gratitude, we fill this cup. Remembering the many times Jesus poured out his love and compassion on the world. In remembrance of the Prince of Peace, we walk with you, O God, in justice and compassion. And together we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Deacons, will you please come forward? And let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, O Lord, that they may make us one with Christ, one with one another in kindness and justice, and one in the ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes again and in final victory, we feast at your heavenly banquet. As you receive the bread, please hold it, and we will all share together. Okay, stop there. Sorry. Yeah, please. Friends, this is the, <laughs> this bread is the righteousness of Christ working through you. Amen. We continue our worship with the cup, which is the shared blood of our Jesus and it is given for each of you in remembrance of him. And once again, as you receive, hold the cup until all are served, and we will take together.
the peace of Christ working in and through you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time at the table. Make us one with one another and one with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we move into our community prayer time. And we have a deep one to begin with from Carl. He appreciates all your cards and prayers during this time of medical testing. He is scheduled for a second biopsy tomorrow to figure out what's going on. It could be an inflamed pancreas or a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Depending on what the doctor finds will determine the next steps that are taken. Continued prayers for strength are appreciated. And a second prayer request came for uh, Sue Rancis who was uh, a state senator, and her husband died yesterday or last night. Is that right? Yeah. And so there was a request for prayers for Sue. That's all I have here. I do have know of some joys that there are some people who now have jobs who didn't have jobs last week, so I want to praise God for that. I want to praise God. There are people on walking on two feet. I see some people I haven't seen before. Dwayne and Linda, welcome back. It's been a while. Yeah, you can't sneak in like that. And very soon, none of you will be able to sneak in because I have my eyes on you. <laughs> okay. With that, let us enter a time of prayer. We thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for all that you have given to us this day. We thank you for the grace and the certainty that you are and that you call us beloved. Help us receive that. Help us feel your love. Not just hear the words, but feel it on our insides. Lord, you know that we are an independent lot and we like to try to do things on our own. Give us the grace and the courage to ask for help when we need it. And allow us, O oh God, the ability to speak with you throughout the day. Know that we are heard and know that you often have a word for us that needs to be heard. We pray for those today who have lost people near and dear to them. We thank you for the years spent in love and ask that those years empower us to live boldly these next years, these next days. And we thank you for your comfort and your peace. We pray, too, for those whose names we do not know, who are all around the world, who struggle with things we can't even imagine. And yet, Lord, we know you know. You're there. And you are working throughout the whole world, throughout the whole world to bring peace and to bring a new kind of understanding, and to bring us into a different level of being human, that we might see each other, that we might care for each other, that we might lift each other up. That there would come a day that, gosh, I believe way back when, that there would be no need for war anymore. Lord, we pray for that day. And we thank you for this day that you are present even in the rain, maybe in the rain. You are present in our homes. You are present here. And for those who are starting new jobs, we ask your blessing upon them and that you go before them and make those workplaces safe 
and you make those places of work holy, and you make those places of work sacred, that all that they do would be reflections of you, O God, and that their tender hearts, that they might not be pushed down, but that they might be lifted up, that they would have colleagues and people who care, who see them and work with them to bring a more glorious kingdom here to earth. Because, O oh Lord, we are not waiting for the kingdom of heaven. We are waiting for kingdom to come here on earth. And we're not just waiting. We are going to work for it day by day, minute by minute. O oh Lord, give us the words to be your I don't want to say soldiers, to be your disciples, that's the better word, to be your disciples here on earth, that we might bring light, that we might be the salt, and that we might, yes, O oh Lord, we might be that city on the hill that all people are wanting to come up to, to see and be loved by you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come here into this place made holy by the presence of God and his sweet spirit that we might rejoice together in all that God has given us. But we come also to be refueled that as pastor spoke, we might be filled and renewed and energized have you ever seen a child that gets excited by a song? Yeah. I want you to think of yourselves as children who are here to sing and rejoice and to praise God. And I know that's hard. So if your face doesn't shine with the glory, nobody's going to see it except me. Well, and her, and her, and, well, we won't go into that, but most of you won't see it, will you? And we will try very hard to shine. This is the song where we're going to say, Jesus, please, shine on us, fill us, shine on the world, Lord, and then empower us as we go out and truly make us, Lord, the light on the hill that all may come to know you and your joy. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Shine, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Way, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Oh, Jesus, oh, what the nations with grace and mercy send forth your word, Lord, and let them be As we 
gaze on your kingly brightness, so our face and his way, your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story, shine on me, shine on me. Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. May your spirit place set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood this nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let her be light. Light and the love in the world, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.